Hello, it's uh, time for another uh, feature on Stat Powers. Today we're going to look at something that's brand new, although it won't be brand new forever. Uh, this is uh, what I'm calling either a population generator or the population sampling simulator. So it's under the sampling menu. Uh, and when you go to it, you are presented with uh, the ability to create a uh, synthetic population from which you can sample. So I'll show you an example of what you can do. Let's just start. I'm going to I'm going to uh, have a population of monkeys and uh, this population is going to have two variables that we'll be looking at. So I'm going to change that to two. Uh, the first variable will be the color and it's going to be a categorical variable. The second is going to be, uh, let's say it's the um, the weight. All right. Uh, the weight of the monkey, but the weight is not a categorical variable. It is a continuous variable. So you can choose disc categorical, discrete, or continuous for the variable types. The next thing you want to move down to is the variable dependencies. Now I am going to uh, not have any dependencies. Uh, so let's close this. I'm going to ignore that feature for the moment. Keep things simple. Um, so now I have two variables. I have color and that's an independent categorical variable and weight which is an independent continuous variable. Uh, notice uh, this is the de this is default values. Uh, the number of values, there's two values, and they're, they have probability of one half each, level one, level two. So it's very <laughs> generic at the beginning. Let's actually change it to be three values, and I'm going to um, uh, show you when I change that, you can see down below, um, there's actually a few errors uh, for color there's one, uh, the variable color and undefined probability. If I click on that, it actually takes me to the, the cell where the problem is. And the, not all levels are defined. There's a blank level. See, it's right there. So you, as you're building your population, you can keep track of the, the, the things that are wrong with it. And you're not going to be able to sample. You notice down below, sampling from this population is not enabled yet because there are problems. Okay, but let's just, let's change the levels that we're going to have. Uh, let's say some of them are going to be brown, some of them are going to be red, and some are going to be uh, spotted. Now, um, I, if I was to put another 0.5, uh, I would get another error. The probabilities don't sum up to one. Okay, that's true. What you can do is you can scale probabilities. What that's going to do is going to, well, scale it so that they add up to one. Clicking that um, is a great way if you just have the, the, the ratios in there. Um, so this is, this is what the probabilities are going to be. They're going to equally likely colorations on these monkeys in this population. Let's go to uh, weight. Um, so this is set as a continuous uh, variable. You can set the precision. So when this is when we get values, this is how many decimal places we went around to. Let's, uh, so these are the choices you have for continuous distributions. Um, you're not choosing like a normal distribution with a mean and a uh, standard deviation. Instead, you're, you're choosing the shape of the distribution. There it goes from uniform to a severe right skew, a moderate right skew, symmetric unimodal, which basically would look like a normal distribution, moderate left skew, and a severe left skew. Let's, let's say most of these are young, but there's some older ones. So I'm going to give this a moderate right skew. Um, let's say the minimum weight is, let's say, uh, Oh, I'm just going to say five and the maximum weight of, let's say, 25. OK, once I set that, everything is good to go. Uh, you can see down below that I can sample now. Uh, and I have choices for sampling from this population. First off, uh, it, it's, you could, of course, set the sample size. I can sample 40 monkeys. When I get the results, I can either have tab separated or comma separated, depending on what kind of output I want. And um, also you can set a random number seed. So if I click sample, I'm going to get uh, my data. So I've got the, the headers, color and weight, and I and you scroll down, you can see I've got all these uh, random monkeys from this population. Every time I sample, of course, I'm gonna get different values. Um, if I set the random number seed to a number, now I'm just going to always get the same sampling from this. Of course, if I, if I change the sample size, things are going to change. But for a sample size of 41, it's always going to be the same. Uh, changing it to comma separated, the data will stay the same in the, in the table, but it'll just 
be comma separated. And actually you can click save and you will get a CSV. I'm gonna show you what that would look like. Uh, open that up in Excel. And here we go. So we got our data in a CSV. If we wanted to uh, do something with it in Excel, um, if you wanted to uh, copy it to another, uh, another, uh, another whatever, <laughs> you can, you can, you can uh, do analysis on this. So maybe it's, it's, since we, uh, well, let, let's take a look at, at what kind of other options we have. Let's, let's add another variable, and that is how about the number of children, or, or let's, let's have um, offspring. Okay, or actually, let's do age. That, that's a good. That's a good one. Okay, the age distribution. I'm going to also have it be. Uh, I'll have it be discrete. So we're we're doing age in uh, years. Um, so I'm going to go down to my age variable. And uh, let's have the age be. Um, likewise, we're going to have the ages have a. Uh, let's have the ages have a. Uh, a moderate right skew as well. Uh, so the minimum age have the minimum age at zero for the newborns and for the maximum age, let's say these, these things live to be 15 years old uh, maximum. Uh, if I sample this, oops, if I sample this, you see, okay, I get the ages. That doesn't look as, let's put this in columns. Now, one thing that we have now is we have age and weight and the thing is, uh, it doesn't make sense for weight and age to be independent of each other, right? It actually would make more sense for the weight of the monkeys to be dependent on the age. So let's actually build that dependency in. Um, now, the way the dependencies go is you have to order them, and each variable can only be dependent on the variables that come before it in order. If I want weight to be dependent on the age, I'm going to have to move weight down to be here, now I can actually check that weight is dependent on age. Uh, I'll show you what we can do now with, with weight. Uh, we have two choices. We can either have a discrete dependency where um, we can set a different distribution for each age value. Uh, so if I, I'm not going to do that, but I'll show you what it would look like. Um, if I set, now you have, you start with the default probabilities um, if I can add a different condition, one condition could be when the age is equal to zero, I can set this to be a, um, a uniform distribution between, let's say, zero and, and five pounds. Okay, so we can, we can look at the default probabilities are uniform distribution between five and 25. Um, now, you can't have different types of distributions. I've changed it to be uniform. Uh, for all ages. Now, I, I don't actually want to do that. You, so what you can do is you can add condition. Condition two could be for age one. Uh, condition three could be for uh, age two and so forth. Um, so you can go through the different conditions and change. But, but actually what I really want to do is show you how to build a linear model. This is a lot of fun. Uh, so the linear model uh, is going to show you you can you can really type in any linear model that you want. Um, it's going so the the weight is going to be equal to uh, some linear model that I can just build. I know I have to write it, and, and it's going to give me a list of the variables that I can include in my linear model. V three is the only variable I can include because that's the only variable that this is dependent on. The the weight is dependent only on age. So. Um, you can have the weight be, let's say, five, uh, or let's have a minimum, let's say, two plus, um, and let's see, f let's say on average every a every year they're going to gain uh, three pounds. So three times v one, that means uh, every every year they're going to be three uh, pounds heavier. And now I want to add some. Uh, variability. So I do plus and the notation is S, that's like a standard deviation for my error, um, S1. So that's going to have a standard deviation of 1. This is the form of linear models. Um, you can actually build much more complicated linear models. Uh, in fact, they don't have to be linear at all. I could actually have squared terms and I can have um, 
uh, you, they don't have to be they, any power actually, and there can be uh, interaction terms as well. We'll cover that in a later video. Um, so now that I click out of this, it, it doesn't give me an error. My weight uh, linear model is now defined. I can sample and you can see what we'll get for weights. Now, in fact, I actually realize uh, why there's a problem. See if you can see it. The reason is uh, I'm trying to um, include variable one in my linear model. But variable one is not uh, available because weight is not dependent on it. I made a typo. I should have put v3. So um, so this is actually the correct correction. It should be 2 plus 3 times v3 plus uh, a, a, an error term, a, a normal with a standard um, deviation of 1. So I'm going to resample that. And I do get my, my, my data. So now I've got, uh, I've got weight that is dependent on the, uh, the age. Now, um, if I wanted to build this a little bit comp more complicated, now if I wanted to make it a little bit more complicated, um, let's try something. Let's actually say that the weight of the monkey actually is dependent on the coloration. Uh, and so I'm going to click color as another dependent variable for weight. And it, it looks like um, for the, uh, the options I have for V1, I have its color, it's categorical. So there's either one for brown, two for red, or three for spotted. So what I'm going to do is actually add uh, some other terms in here. The, let's say the brown monkeys are a little bit heavier. Um, let's say they're on average about... Uh, five pounds heavier. So I'm going to plus five uh, V1 equals one will allow us to add an additional five to the value of weight when the when V1 equals one. So uh, this is the notation. This is going to be valid notation. Um, I'm going to sample this. Now, unfortunately, it's not totally obvious <laughs> from this that it actually is adding another five. Uh, what we could do is we would we would um, we could do a linear model and, and and we can kind of do linear regression and see if we can estimate that five. Uh, if you want to really make it stand out, I'm going to put a 500 there. <laughs> we'll really see if those brown monkeys are are heavy. Uh, yeah, you can see it's working. You can see the brown monkeys are extremely heavy <laughs> even at three years old. Okay, so um, this is how you can build uh, build this up. I'm going to sample now. Uh, Let's say you uh, want to save this and work on it later. You can go up to the top. You can save the file. Click Save, and it'll just download the, the population file. It has all the parameters in it. Um, and you can load a population file by clicking Choose File. Um, the other thing that's kind of cool is sharing it. Now, um, if you want to share it with uh, someone else, but you don't want them to know all of the uh, all of the parameters in your population, the sharing feature is really great for that. I'm going to click share. It'll create uh, a link and uh, the tiny URL link. Um, what it's going to do is going to encode all of the parameters into the URL. So it'll be kind of hidden. I mean, somebody could figure it out if they wanted to go through the trouble, but who, but uh, I'll show you what this would look like in a new tab. Um, now I've got my monkeys population. I can still see that there's three variables, color, weight, age. I can see they're categorical, continuous, and discrete, but I can't make any changes to this. I can't click into the variable dependencies. All I can do is sample from the population. Uh, so this is a great way to, um, so sharing it with other people, if, they, if you want them to try to estimate the parameters of the population using statistical inference, uh, but without actually knowing and uh, cheating <laughs> into what the variables are. So we can sample from this and say, okay, so I've, I've just sampled some, some monkeys from this population. I can do some linear regression. I can do some whatever other kind of analysis uh, on the, the data. Uh, so I'll do another video with some more advanced uh, population generation, but uh, this will get you started. Okay, bye.